I like coffee. Don't you? <laughs> I like coffee in the morning. I like coffee at noon. I like coffee at night. No, I'm not that kind of coffee person. <laughs> Matter of fact, lots of times I tend to shy away from coffee. Recovering from being sick, I kind of doesn't taste right yet and doesn't smell right yet, but ah, that heat that goes down in and just tends to kind of warm up the innards, that kind of gives me an attitude adjustment. You know, I remember when I was a kid growing up, Ovaltine, you know, drinking Ovaltine, you know, that kind of smelly, kind of chocolatey, kind of weird, flavorful thing that, you know, your mom used to make. <laughs> I don't remember having Ovaltine too often because I think we were so poor that it was kind of expensive for us. But I do remember it. Of course, there was Hershey's chocolate and all the other chocolates, you know, that were around at the time. But Ovaltine was kind of a fad for a while. Coffee in the morning sometimes for a lot of people is like an attitude adjustment. They get to re-challenge or refocus their attention. They need to, or they get to, maybe stop for a minute. Ah, you know, kind of sit back. Ooh. Take a cup of coffee, you know. And if they have a favorite cup, they kind of look at it, you know, like a favorite teacup. You know, in the old days when they used to have the little tea, and they used to lift the little finger, you know, and they have the little, you know, kind of like espresso in Europe. There's a genteel way of doing things, but unfortunately, most Americans are more gentile than genteel. However, you can find that still in some places, you know. Some people tend to <sighs> sniff the aroma, taste the bouquet, swish the the flavor. Oh, wait a minute. Are we talking coffee or wine? <laughs> you see, they have their own way in each country of doing whatever it is that they particularly or peculiarly like and enjoy. I kind of like the refocusing of my attitude. That's the thing that I kind of use coffee for. To maybe warm up my innards, yes, but to refocus and to bring into concentration for a minutiae of a moment my attitude, my actions, my intentions. In the morning, we all should choose some type of devotional, some type of emotional way of expressing ourselves and redirecting our soul which is very emotional and that's what your soul is designed for your emotions your soul was designed to fly the flights of fancy and to emote itself into the universe in such a way that it would affect all those around now maybe you're a screaming shouting stomping bumping cromping you know kind of person you know where you affect everyone around you <laughs> in a negative way but I'm not saying that you should be a power positive thinking person and go, I'm happy camper. No, I'm saying God, who is at work, both to do and to will of his good pleasure in your day for you, with angels all about, with all the heavens and the heavenly hosts watching to see what you're going to do today. You could turn the attention of your attitudes and actions and refocus them on God for a moment, an intense minutiae of time, and express yourself to God before the day runs away. Or you could go about your own way. Me? Hmm. I choose a better way. <coughs> I choose what Jesus called a more excellent way. You see, I see in Him something I want. I see in God, His Son, the desire to be like and to emulate the person to whom I have chosen to spend my life and equip my life to be like, the Lord. 
And so because I do, I want to see what it is that he did. I want to choose to do those things that he did to accomplish the purpose that some point in time God looked down on his only begotten son and said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Huh. And people want to know what to do? Be like Jesus. How simple can that be? Right. <laughs> well, if you're like me, maybe in the morning it's not so simple. Maybe it takes a little effort on our part to turn the attention and change our intentions back to where God wants us before we get on with our own inventions of the day and what we want to do and say and be. So that's why we spend a moment to check our attitudes at the door, to inspire our soul to be led by our spirit. Because our soul can follow the flesh. And that flesh, you know where it's going. It's got its day already prepared and heading that way. But your soul can be amazed in emotional ways by what the Spirit of God in your spirit can do to it as He leads you along the way He wants you to go. Love is the higher law. Love does no wrong to one's neighbor. It never hurts anybody. Therefore, love meets all the requirements in the fulfilling of the law. Romans 13.10 There are things we shouldn't do simply because we love God and because we don't want to hurt somebody else's conscience. We may have the freedom to do these things, but our freedom could offend others or cause them to do something against their conscience and thus sin against God. If you walk in love today, there may be things that you have the right to do, that you have the choice to do, that you could do, but the Holy Spirit will prompt you not to exercise your right out of love for someone who is watching you. Love never demands its own way. See 1 Corinthians 13.5 Love is always the higher law. Often I hear in America of people wanting to exercise their freedom of speech. I always think, why not exercise your freedom of silence? You know, the the uh, Bill of Rights that says, you have the right to shut up. <laughs> well, that's not one of those rights that Christians want to talk about, because all Americans know that we have the right to shout and scream and stomp and romp and chomp at the bit. Anytime that somebody says something, we want to throw a fit. But the reality of the law of God working in our lives is that we choose not to be like the world in its ways. We don't want to be a soulful Christian. We want to be a spiritual Christian, living after the things of the Spirit. So we ask God to work through our spirit to affect our soul so that we don't always think it's all about us but that rather we choose to fill our soul with the Spirit of God, that His love, of which God is, could reach out to others through our emotions as well as through our devotions.